Welcome everyone to the Healthy School Food Summit brought to you by the Coalition for Healthy School Food and Plant Pure. I'm your host, Ron Gandiza. In this session, we are honored to have with us Tim Kaufman. Tim is a teacher who once suffered from many chronic health issues that made him almost immobile. He had lost interest in life, had almost given up, and now he's an athlete that thrives on a whole foods plant-based lifestyle and is free of all medications. He uses his blog posts at fatmanrants.com and his Facebook page to connect with other people who are ready to make a similar change. And I know he's doing a lot more to help people. So thank you so much for being here, Tim. Oh, thank you for having me, Ron. What a, what a cool initiative you have going. And uh, I'm really honored to be a part of it, actually. So thank you. Well, your story inspired me. And reading it on Facebook, and I shared it with everyone there within Plant Pure, and, and you're known within the plant-based community because you are so active online yeah. in telling your story. So tell your story to our, our viewers right now. Um, so I'll do a, a quick condensed version. Um, basically, you know, by the time I was 38 years old, um, I feel like I just woke up one day and I weighed over 400 pounds um, and I was super, super sick. My blood pressure was usually 250, or, uh, 255 over 115 was actually the last reading on my monitor. Um, I was on a ton of medicine. Um, I had a ton of like joint pain and stuff. And um, I was on a lot of controlled substances and medicine for cholesterol, high blood pressure. I should have been on metformin. Um, and I was really sick and I was just about immobile. Um, I walked with a cane and crutches and um, I had a bunch of devices because my knees were failing. I, you know, I was, I was in bad shape. Um, and at 38, I was relatively young. And um, I pretty much uh, just resigned to the fact that I was going to spend, you know, my life doing as little as possible and, and sit on the couch. We had um, acquired a whole bunch of bad food habits and choices, uh, raising kids kind of young. Things got really busy, and um, we spent a lot of time eating fast food and takeout food. And uh, we built this lifestyle that was super, super unhealthy. So, um, basically, we lost it. It's kind of a long story, but we lost my wife's mom, and um, then we lost my father as well. And um, I kind of knew that I was next, and my wife had been through so much already. and. Um, I knew that I was going to be the next one to go and I was scared um, and I was tired and I was tired of just feeling sick all the time. So I went to the doctor to see if I could get cleared for bariatric surgery and um, I was denied because I was actually too sick. So I started looking, you know, to lose weight and, and try to become more healthy. And I did what I think most Americans do. Um, I started counting calories and, um, you know, switched to a, a low carb diet and try to, you know, get lower fat foods. And, um, you know, at over 400 pounds, obviously you lose some weight, but, um, I still had all the medical stuff and, um, I still just, I didn't feel good. I really just, I'd get up in the morning. I just did not feel like getting out of bed. And so one day I was sitting, uh, watching movies on Netflix and fat sick and nearly dead came up. And uh, I went on a 30-day juice fast. By day six, I started seeing huge improvements in my health. Um, I made it to 30 days, and then I watched Forks Over Knives. And um, since then, that's about almost five years ago, um, I've been plant-based and no meat, no dairy oil. And uh, I've lost, we don't really know how much I weighed. My doctor says I was well over 400 pounds. I, I like to think that I was close to 400 pounds. So um, the scale, the scale just wouldn't go that high. So, you know, since then I've lost uh, about 200 pounds, but that's not even the cool thing. The cool thing is all the medical stuff that has, you know, I, I'm not on any medicine anymore. I have a genetic disease called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and it um, affects the collagen in my body, all my connective tissue. Um, so I dislocate uh, a lot and stuff, and it causes a lot of arthritis, a lot of joint damage. And, you know, it just happened that plant-based diet is also an anti-inflammatory diet, which is exactly what I needed. 
Um, so I am not on any pain medicine. I get, you know, hardly any inflammation at all. I feel great. And, you know, I, I say that a plant-based lifestyle didn't just save my life. It gave me an entirely new one. You've taken these benefits and really channeled it uh, quite a bit because I see you doing more athletic events. Tell us a little more about these activities you're doing now that you've lost this weight and, and have the, uh, the inflammation uh, go away. Yeah, so I think what makes that special is where I came from. Um, my doctor just did an interview um, for a film that we're working on. And, you know, to hear him talk, like I, like I had to like leave the room because it was, it was so sobering, the stuff that he was saying. But, you know, he was saying that, you know, there's two issues. that You had the obesity, but then you also have this connective tissue disease. And what he said is, this is back 10 years ago, because um, they, they asked him, you know, what do you think when you see Tim now? And he said, 10 years ago, even before I lost the weight, he said just that I would come into his office every 30 days and not be in a wheelchair was a huge accomplishment. I mean, that was like his goal, just for 30 days to keep me out of a wheelchair. Um, you know, I was constantly in braces and stuff. And actually I got to the point where I had some custom made braces just to hold my body up. So, you know, to, to demonstrate how fast these changes took, I mean, this is, you know, this would affect people that are not overweight. Um, but to demonstrate the changes, the first half marathon that I ever ran was with a valid handicap parking pass. Like I legally could have parked in a handicap spot. Um, so, to see where I was, and sometimes it's hard because I, I forget really where I was. Um, but as I was on um, so many painkillers and narcotics that I couldn't get in a car for more than 15 minutes because I would be so nauseous. Um, and we'd have to pull over all the time. Um, I was on a drug called fentanyl for pain, which is super, super strong. Um, and that was the thing, like my life was about managing pain you know, and escaping reality, and then trying to stay mobile. So to see, you know, now, um, I set a goal, you know, and my goals at, at first were just like, they seem ridiculous, just getting out of a chair twice, or maybe climbing up five stairs. And that was like a big deal. You know, and then, you know, I tried to walk a mile, and you know, I didn't make it, you know, I, I got it to about three quarters of a mile. Then we come home, pack my legs in ice, and I have some pictures of, of how swollen and stuff. It, it, you know, it looks like some kind of uh, special effects or something. Um, but I just kept, you know, the, the, the better that I ate, the more cleanly that I ate, the better I felt, the more energy I had. And something about it just kept me going back to do a little bit more than I, I did the last time I was out. And, you know, to give you an idea now, you know, I've run, I don't even know how many, you know, half marathons, which all started with a mile walk. And um, I love the outdoors. So I started hiking. We got into climbing mountains. So, um, you know, some hundred mile bike races I've done. Um, I, I don't know how many high peaks I've climbed in the Adirondacks. We summited Mount Washington last year. I'm training for Ironman now. Um, you know, I just, I do, I love just being, I just love being outside. I love just doing active stuff now. Now, when did you start getting athletic? Because five years you went plant-based, but, you know, it takes some time, of course, to get better into shape. So when would you say your activity picked up? Right. I, you know, it wasn't because people ask me that all the time. Well, you know, I believe me, athletics and, you know, run, that stuff, people with EDS don't do that to begin with. And that was never, that never crossed my mind. You know, I didn't know what a 5K was. I didn't know if a 5K was 300 miles or 50 yards. Like, I didn't know. Um, it never happened like that. It's just, you know, you're sitting on the couch all the time. Basically, I would take as few steps as possible to get back to the house after work and just collapse on the couch. And then after I started eating plant-based, I never went plant-based to become active. I went plant-based so I could live another year with my family. It, that's why I went plant-based. It had nothing to do with even losing weight. It's just I wanted to be alive next year so my wife didn't have to go through another funeral. Um, you know, and, and, and things that would scare me is, you know, I'm in the doctor's office and he would make me lay down on the table until my heart rate came down below 115 before I could leave, resting heart rate. 
And it's funny, now I have trouble maintaining that on a bike ride. So it's just, you know, it's been full circle. But at any rate, the activities kind of just came from, I'm bored out of my mind sitting on the couch. I got to go do something. But what happened is all my joints had so much atrophy because I've never moved. I never, you know, had any range of motion. And I just kept getting more and more atrophy, less range of motion um, because of the inflammation was huge. But the better I felt, I would move a little bit, and the next day, the pain would actually be less instead of more. So I was in pain no matter what I did. It didn't matter if I took it easy, like, you know, the doctors all told me to just take it easy. Um, so little by little, I kind of, you know, we went for a one-mile walk, and then, you know, we we said, well, we did, we signed up for a Tough mutter, and we kind of walked jog through that, and then the next thing, you know, I'm like, well, let's try a 5K. And we did that, and I, I told my wife, you know, we, we should try a 10K, and she said, you're nuts. And, you know, so then a couple months later, we did a 10K, and then I said, hey, we should try a half marathon. She said, you're absolutely crazy. Um, so it never was this, I didn't wake up, I didn't have anyone in my life that was an athlete. Um, I didn't even know anyone that was plant-based. I mean, I live in a community where it's a lot of farmers and hunters, you know, where I live. And I didn't even know what plant-based was. I just knew that on forks over knives that the meat and dairy caused inflammation, which probably didn't even know what that meant, but I just knew I shouldn't eat it, you know? So I don't know if that answers your question, but I never set out to be an athlete. It just kind of happened. And it still is, you know, I looked at something like Ironman and I'm like, it looks pretty cool, you know, but I didn't know how to swim in, sep in September. I didn't know how to swim. I'd never been in a pool. And so last week I actually uh, swam 1.2 miles nonstop. So I got a lot of good support and a lot of cool friends that helped me out. That's amazing. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. Now, you're a school teacher. And what do you teach? Correct. So I teach um, – it's – uh, technology and engineering, but what I do is I teach um, some of the more advanced engineering classes so the kids that take my class actually get uh, college credit. So it's a college level class taught in the high school building. So I'm assuming some of your students have seen you go through the transformation because this isn't like a 20 year transformation. It's been a few years. Right. So, you know, the sad part about being a teacher, you have about a four year lifespan. Um, and I didn't understand it when I started teaching. Someone tried to tell me that, you know, you see this teacher that's been there 30 years and they retire and you think the school's going to just, you know, miss them forever. But in four years, the kids that are coming in have no clue who that teacher was. So, and it's kind of, it's been the same with my transition. Now, the kids that I had four years ago had me at over 400 pounds. You know, they had, I never got out of a chair. I learned how to teach in a chair. Um, and when I did get up, if I, if like I, dropped the chalk I just learned it was just a natural action to kick it in the corner because there's no way I'm picking it up um, so through those kids that I had as freshmen and then seniors you know I lost the majority of my weight pretty pretty quickly so yeah they are very familiar with my story um, the new kids I have now kind of but you know the truth is I look at pictures of what I look like last year and I'm still changing drastically and my wife too um, we didn't even know my wife had weight to lose, and I think she's almost up to 70-pound weight loss, and we're not doing anything that's crazy. We just eat and live, and I, it's just happening, you know? So with your students seeing this transformation, even the new students, I'm sure they hear about you because I think your school has a program now, right, that you started? Yeah. Well, well, not, not so much a program, but the reason – so a lot of my students um, – I kind of, the newspaper picked up my story last year I ran my first marathon. Um, and the newspaper got a hold of my story. So it was all over the front page. And then I, was, I did a, a bunch of things on, um, you know, like live radio. And, and I've been around like locally. And I do talks locally as well. Um, so a lot of the kids know from that. And of course, you know, when you're a student sitting there in school and you're bored, you just Google your teacher's name and all this stuff comes up. So, you know, they, they're aware that way. Um, but what happened is I, I was on, um, oh, I think it was actually Lee Fulkerson interviewed me for Plant Peer Nation. And I just happened to say something to the health teacher who happens to be my friend. And she's like, you know, 
you should come up and do a talk for my kids. And I'm like, okay. So we just timed it that I took like one of my lunch periods and I came up there and talked to our kids. And it was like such a hit. Like I couldn't, like the kids wrote me letters and so it was unbelievable, the response. Um, so what we started doing, um, I think a couple of years ago, um, every kid that goes through um, the health. So, so in our school, you have to have one year of health um, in order to graduate. So usually we focus on ninth and 10th graders. Um, and it's a half year course. So they'll go, every student that goes through the health class will hear my you know, presentation that I do. And I do one in the beginning of the year and one at the end so I could cover all of them. So I thought that was super cool. And administration actually gets me a substitute for the day. And I go up there and I do five presentations back to back. Um, so as the kids cycle through school, every single one of them will have heard my story. And I, I like it's, it just blows my mind. I, I love teaching and I love the plant-based lifestyle and it's a way to bring it together. And my heart is really, you know, into, into these kids. Um, it's a little bit different than my normal talks. I talk a lot about cholesterol and sugar and let's be honest, the kids don't care about that. Um, so I use it, I use my story as an outlet to talk about plants and talk about marketing and, um, to talk about how, you know, you see all these sports figures, you know, I even kid around with them. I'm like, so you see the sports figure that's, you know, in a, uh, all out race somewhere. And then, you know, they have a picture behind them of chocolate milk you know, refreshing after a race. And I'm like, if you ever drink chocolate milk after that kind of workout, it's going to end up on your shoes. So we talk about marketing and why this stuff is in their everyday lives. But then um, instead of getting into all the cholesterol and stuff like that, I'm able to talk about addiction. I'm able to talk about suicide and I'm able to talk about self-esteem from setting goals. So it's, it's such a cool platform that I get to like mix all that stuff together that I'm passionate about and uh, my school district is so awesome about doing it. So, yeah, so, so that's basically, they have a 40 minute presentation from me. Um, and then I think what you're referring to is we also have community education classes at our school. Um, and so it's not just teachers, um, but basically anyone in the district, whether it's a, a chiropractor or dental, whoever, um, they come in and the, they make a catalog and it goes out to the community and they can take courses, adult learning classes or whatever. Um, and so I said, well, I'm already teaching at the school. I'm already there. And uh, we have the home and careers centers like in the middle school, which is right next door to my high school. So, um, yeah, so I do a six week program for the community. And it turns out a lot of the people that are in there, Actually, um, I've either their son or daughter has heard my presentation and that's what prompted them to go to the community ed class. So I, I call that it's like a very, um, you know, it's like a beginner's class. I call it transitioning to a plant based lifestyle. And, you know, we go in there, I share my story and, you know, I just I talk about, you know, basically take take them through why plant based makes so much sense. Um, you know, we talk about a lot of things. And then we also, it's kind of a community. So we share experiences. I'll give them like homework to watch some YouTube links or whatever, or something on, you know, forks over knives on Netflix. And we come back and talk about it. Um, the, the feedback has been absolutely phenomenal and we cook too. So we do a lot of cooking. Um, in this round of the classes, I want to get them more involved with actually setting up stations where they cook so I can talk while they're cooking. So, and I, my, my goal is, you know, locally, it's cool because I can tell them locally where to shop, where we get, you know, cause that was a big thing for us. We had never shopped before, you know, and, and, you know, when you're juicing, you know, I'd go get my little bag of vegetables, put it in the juicer and I get, you know, a couple spoonfuls of juice. So, you know, it's, if you do it the wrong way, plant based, you know, people complain that it's expensive, but it's really not, but you have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So locally, I can set them up with some of the produce companies. We deal with even some of the, the wholesale restaurant, you know, where you can get 25 pound bags of carrots and stuff like this. Um, so, yeah, I love it. I love doing it. And it's it's working out great. What's been the uh, response from your fellow teachers? Uh, most of them are 
interested. I'm not a real, and this is going to sound crazy because of Facebook, this is not how I live, but um, at school, I'm, I'm not as social. I, I keep really busy at school. So um, I was never the kind of teacher that was in the, you know, the faculty lounge in the faculty room and that. Um, but again, most of them know my story from the newspaper and uh, some of them follow me on Facebook or whatever, but they're super cool about it. Um, you know, and they're pretty open to talking about it. Um, and it's, it's hard, it's hard for anyone to argue results that's worked with me. Like it's hard, it's hard. Um, but probably the biggest thing is like, people think I'm like a food police or something that always kind of <laughs> your students, uh, of course are in the cafeteria and I'm not sure if your school has any food options, that are more, <laughs> yeah. more plant-based, you know, but what are your thoughts about that in terms of just the school system in general? Uh, <laughs> um, so I like, okay. So first of all, I think that, and, and I don't know much about this. I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I would assume that this stuff all gets, it starts at a federal level and trickles down um, to the state. So, okay. I want to be careful not get in trouble here. <laughs> so the, the, the school lunches suck, like, but it's nothing to do with our school. It's just it, society's idea of food is, is all wrong. Right. So it, it's, it's actually to, to focus um, all the blame on a school or whatever, it's kind of not fair because it's all around us. I mean, it, it blows my mind. I, I haven't watched TV in forever. And um, I was setting up, we got a new deal with cable. So I set up this cable box and I just turned the TV on for a minute. And I probably shouldn't have. But the commercials, they go from pharmaceutical commercials right to fast food, back to pharmaceutical, and then back to food. Like it, it's mind blowing and it's society as a whole. We have this whole picture of what food should look like and it's not food. So a couple of years ago, I don't remember exactly when or how it got legislated, but there was some law change that changed a lot of how the school lunches look. Um, and more than the school lunches, what I notice is the snacks. So the kids have um, the school lunch and then they also have this, um, store it's a school store so a few years ago you could go buy whatever whatever chips or whatever whatever you wanted really terrible food um they got rid of it we came just back to school they said some laws changed we can't have it anymore and the food at the snack window got better but there's always ways around you know you change the law and it'll be good for a few months and then you start finding how to get around it so for example, uh, pretty much they were looking at caloric intake. So you couldn't have a bag of chips that was 300 calories, but you could do the snack packs that were 100 calories. So you bring the 100 calorie snack packs in, and then you make them cheap enough, and the kids are going by in three bags. So did you really fix anything? You know, um, my opinion. Um, the food issues we have to start at home. Um, and you know, I was actually thinking about this on, on my way home today. Um, yeah, the school lunches are, you know, not the best. Um, but you and I both know that it all has to, you follow the money. That's where you're going to find where all the stuff is coming from. Um, and, and, you know, I even noticed on the disposable trays, some of my kids, they double book classes so they, they purposely don't have a lunch, but then we allow them to eat in the room to take an extra class. And so we get a lot of the throwaway trays down there. And you know, right like on the center of that tray, there's a little slot, this little divider, and it's just, it's engraved right in there, milk. Like it, it's not, it's not an option. Like it's there and it's so much there that it's on the tray where that milk goes. And so if, if the kid, the student isn't making a choice. It's, it's made for them, right? Like it's made for them. Um, and I, you know, I make, when I do my talks, I kind of make a joke out of it. I kind of make a joke like, you know, you know, raise your hand if you would think I'm a weirdo if I go in my backyard and pick a carrot out of my garden and brush it off and eat it. And they're like, no, no, no one would think, you know, that that's totally fine. And I said, okay, I'm going to go get a glass of milk. I got a cow in my backyard. I have no cup. What do I do? And the kids just look. I'm like, would somebody think I was weird if I went and got milk in my backyard? And they're all like, yeah, but see, we don't see it like that, you know? 
And the kids don't see it like that because it's they don't know any different. Like this is how it's always been. Um, so in my mind, um, you know, for me, I would rather work on the example end of it um, because the chances are a guy like me is never going to be able to change the legislation. Maybe you guys can. That would be super cool. Um, so for me, my important is talking to the kids more on like a one-on-one. -on -one. The kids see me eating all day. And, you know, I constantly hear like, I'll put a sweet potato in my microwave and I have a time perfect. I put it in for four minutes. I go teach a class. When I come back 40 minutes later, it's perfect eating temperature. And I just grab it out of my microwave and I'm eating it on the next class. And I always get, are you just eating that potato? It's like, yeah, what do you do with potatoes? <laughs> so they see that. And the cool thing is, um, if I bring extra stuff with me, they'll eat it. So um, a lot of the teachers have parties and stuff. And it's kind of a joke with me that I'll bring in carrots for the last day. I love carrots, if you didn't know. Um, and they'll eat them. You know, and I, I honestly believe if the kid has a choice, that they will go for the most healthy food. More healthy food. I'm not talking like I'm not talking about you know, um, picking up a, a plate of peas over pizza. But I'm talking about sweet snacks. Um, I really believe if you had something in a package and then had some fresh blueberries and strawberries and and watermelon cut up, the kids will go for the fresh fruit. Um, because I've seen it before. I've seen it even in my classroom. The kids are always hounding me. You know, if I come in with a big bucket of straw, I'll come up with a pound of strawberries, and they're like all over them. So I think it's cool if they had the options. Um, but again, you know, I keep thinking back to when I was a kid, um, we didn't have like a salad bar or anything. I mean, you basically, you got what the lunch lady put on your plate. And now, um, since I've been teaching, there are, most of the schools have a salad bar where you can go, you know, get your own salad, which is a cool, awesome idea because at least they have that option available. And if you want to do it right, you could. Um, they, most of the kids will have, you know, a couple of leaves and then they put all the garbage on there and then top it off with like three cups of ranch dressing or blue cheese or something. But it's there. So what I was thinking when I was a kid, if we would have had a salad bar and I would have had my pizza and french fries or whatever, and I would have saw another kid going for the salad bar, I would think the kid's weird, right? I wasn't like, I would never do that. Like, that's crazy. Why would you do that when you're going to have pizza? And but it's weird because now some of my friends I know that have young kids, you know, I know they're either a bringing a lunch or they're going right to that salad bar and um, they don't, they don't, that stigma is kind of gone. You know what I mean? I, um, because when they go there, I'm, I'm speaking at one of my friends, uh, Massiello, his kids would eat the food that they eat at home and that's normal. Like that's their normal. And that pizza is like not a normal thing to them. So that's why I say if we can, if we can get these kids, you know, get the parents to bring the lifestyle into the school, it's a whole different ball game than trying to legislate it from the top down. It really has to be uh, a multiple or a multi-pronged approach, whether it's with the parents, with teachers being able to, to speak to speak, you know, and not, say, well, wait a minute, you should be, and then say something completely contradictory. Right. Uh, and then with administrators or legislators, you know, on, at that top down. So if you can have a multi-pronged effect, it's much more effective rather than focusing one effort or the other. For sure, for sure. And, uh, well, I really appreciate your time. You know, before we go, Tim, I want to ask you, because you've, you've provided some great insight here, why do you call your site, your website, <laughs> Batman Ranch? Because... You are not a fat man anymore. <laughs> yeah, it kind of stuck. It actually, um, I think it had to do with a domain that I bought. I couldn't find anything, and I had a choice of, in fact, a couple of my teachers helped me pick it up. I had my choice of like four that I was looking at, and uh, I went around to a few of my teachers. But, you know, I started my website a couple years ago, so I wasn't, you know, all the way, and I, I'm still not where I want to be. I, you know, I'm still not. And I, and I think any journey that's worth going on never ends, you know, and, and I think, um, I don't know, the name's stuck and I, I kind of like it. I don't know. So your, your website is fatmanrants.com. And what do you talk about in, in the blog? 
Um, so the blog started as, um, I'm writing a book. So the blog kind of started as a way I could just start parking ideas and see if people would actually read. And the, it's been crazy. The feedback's been crazy. So, um, you know, I do a little bit of my transition kind of more beginner help, but I do a lot of other stuff like, like with healthy thinking and, um, addiction and stuff like that. But, uh, my Facebook page, that's kind of very centered around plant-based and then my Instagram is all the food. So I don't know, I guess my blog is more what's inside my head. Um, and it could be random stuff. And then, you know, my Facebook page and Instagram are more my plant-based outlet. No, what's your, what's your Facebook page? I, everything is fat man rants. Like everything. So if, so if someone goes to Facebook and just look up, looks up fat man rants. Yeah. I think it's fat man rants.com. But if you Google that, yeah, it's yeah. I actually, I, I think I, I tweet like twice a day, but I've never even logged into my Twitter, so I don't even know what the password is. But <laughs> if everything's set up, so it shares. But. Well, thank, thank you for being an inspiration you know, to so many people and, and being vocal. It's one thing to do this, but to be out there and, and promote you know, the benefits and help you know, people that way, it, it's, it's a big deal. You know, Plant Your Nation, of course, as a film, we have the visibility within Netflix and iTunes and Amazon, but right. you, know, you have a personal story as well that's getting out in multiple ways. You know, like you said, you're working on a movie with uh, as well. So there's a lot of different things that I hope uh, others will also follow your example. There, and you want to know what, I, you know what, it's funny because you, you got me um, thinking about the interview I did with Lee. But, you know, I totally, I actually, he might not admit this, but I had him crying for a little while. Um, I said, you know, he, I don't think he realized the value of, that movie but I was telling him I'm like my story is not that crazy I mean I, I can I can give you a list of 30 people right now that have almost identical stories to mine and there's thousands out there you know not not to the quite 200 pound extreme but and it's you know it's really I, I keep thinking am I making this up in my head or is it really happening but it's a movement and um, it's happening because you know this this stuff when it's it's kind of like you know, when I talk to people, I feel like I'm on the other side of this door and, and I'm at a party and they don't know what's over here. And I'm like, you got to check this out. You got, you got, and, and sometimes I wish, I wish we could say, okay, if you want to go plant-based, you have to pay me a hundred bucks a week for a membership. And I feel like people would do it, but I mean, how do you tell people just, you know, just eat plants and <laughs> you know, how to, it, cause it seems so good to be true, but like, when I started doing this, I'm like, why doesn't everyone know about this? And so that's why I'm passionate at sharing. And I, and I share this because everything I did is 100% repeatable. There's nothing special about me. In fact, the news one time coined me saying, I'm just a fat guy that ate a bunch of apples. <laughs> you know, I think that is the key to this. There's, there's no magic, you know. It's just we're eating the food that was designed for us and we're getting the benefits from it. And that's it. It's so simple. It's so simple. Well, thank you. And my story is similar to yours in that I couldn't move. I was on a cane as well. And wow. so it wasn't until I watched Conspiracy and Forks Over Knives, mm -hmm. working with Lee Fulkerson. For those of you who don't know, Lee Fulkerson is uh, one of the producers of Forks Over Knives and the writer. And working with Lee was just a thrill, much like you in, in talking to Lee. I bet that was, you know, inspiring as well. And that film, among others, you know, Plant Your Nation is a film, uh, really the same writer and producer as, as Forks Over Knives. So it's inspired a lot of people. And But that's the key here, sharing the stories, telling other people, right. and, and sharing the resources. And that's what, this, that's what this summit is all about. Awesome. I so appreciate that the summit, I'm, I'm so, I can't wait for it. I'm going to watch them all, so I can't wait. All right. Well, so. thank you very much. And for everybody here, uh, again, visit fatmanrands.com because it, it really, you really do have some great stories there, Tim. Uh, I really appreciate it. And for everyone else who wants to learn more about their schools, what their schools can do, please visit healthyschoolfood.org. That's the coalition's website, the Coalition for Healthy School Food. is healthyschoolfood.org. And Plant Pure Nation, you can learn more about the Plant Pure Meals that Plant Pure Nation develops and the plant-based movement and what we're doing there at plantpurenation.com. Again, thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye.